I am a mocha mom and I am back to encourage you to date your mate. We're in an upside down and backwards kind of society where we spend a lot of time and effort and we give a lot of care and understanding to a total stranger that we meet in the street. Someone we gave our number to and agreed to go and have some kind of activity with to get to know them better. That's the person we spend all our time getting dressed for and spend money to do some great thing to connect with a total stranger. And yet, when we finally decide to be with the person who we're going to be with for the rest of our life, when we're with them, we don't give that same kind of devotion and attention. We wait for some magical thing to happen, some magical light bulb to go off in our heads to let us know this is the person that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. And some of us are still waiting for that magical moment. So maybe we're dating for years and years and years and years. Or maybe we're just going to live with the person until this magical light bulb goes off in our mind. Because based on what we see all around us, uh, with people getting divorced every five minutes, whether they're Christian or not, we don't have that much faith that two people can stay together for. Being with somebody successfully is a daily choice. And it's not a magical light bulb that goes off in your head so much as a daily process of making choices and turning your focus toward that person. It's not because you spent $30,000 on a wedding and you found the perfect wedding dress. Some of these shows are fun to watch, but it's a little ridiculous. You know, I'm going to find this perfect wedding dress and that's going to change my life and, and, and give me the best start on my... I mean, it's really, really ridiculous. Now that you're married, now that you have him, what do you do so that you don't become one of those people that is sitting before a judge and saying, we just lost the, the fire we're not compatible. He went and got what he needed from somebody else, or I went and got what I needed from somebody else. And I think the key to that are two kinds of dating that I've learned to do with my husband. And in 2014, we will celebrate 20 years of marriage. I've learned that romance doesn't die. We kill it by neglecting it. If it's like a fire, we have to feed it just like you would your fireplace, if you go camping, if you start a fire and you never add wood or anything to it, it will eventually die out. Sex is, intim is an intimate act, but it doesn't feed intimacy. I don't know if you notice, a man can have a sex, sex with a woman and not feel connected to her at all. And a woman can feel connected as she's having sex with a woman, with a man, but it's not enough to feed all those places in her that she needs to be fed from that man. So I think true intimacy comes from sharing not just your body, but what's in your mind, what's in your heart, what your dreams are, what your hopes are, how you, how you're experiencing your life every day. You can live in the same house with somebody and not have any clue what's really going on inside of them. If all you're talking about is, uh, can you pick up some milk? What's for dinner? Uh, the kids did this or the kids did that. That's not true intimacy. But when you choose to engage in activities that you both enjoy, or maybe this week you're doing something he enjoys and maybe next week you're doing something that you're both doing something you enjoy. A lot of people make a big deal about dates because we have certain ideas about what dates are and maybe we're, things are tight for us financially. Maybe we can't find a babysitter to watch our younger kids. And so we say, well, in this time in my life, I can't date. I believe that everyone can date. Think of a date as an opportunity to connect your heart and your mind to your husband or your wife. And if that's the case, you don't necessarily have to leave your house in order to do it. I hope your children have a bedtime. If they don't, 
then that's another video. Now, if your kids are too old to have a bed bedtime that you set, then there should be no problem for you to leave the house because then you could leave them in the house alone or you could leave the younger siblings with them. This is something that I recommend the date night that you do at least once a week, if possible. Once every two weeks, it to me would be the maximum amount of time that you should let pass. A date could be you put the kids to bed, you both go down to the basement. I don't recommend just watching a movie because neither one of you is really talking during that time. So a movie can be incorporated into the date night, but I would have a time when maybe you're eating dessert and there's nothing on and you can actually face each other and interact. Or you're, you know, you'll save your dinner for that time. And, you know, depending on what your setup is like, we used to like to go down to our basement. We would burn a candle, turn a little table into like a restaurant setup. I've done that when I've been feeling especially creative or open up a, a sheet and make a pretend picnic on the floor. Maybe you'll go all out and cook something special just for the two of you and give your kids chicken nuggets. I don't know. Whatever it is that you like to do. There have been times we've stayed up and we've played games, not the type of games that you have to really think like chess where, you know, the game is not moving that fast and you can have a really nice conversation as you play the game were really little, we would put them in a stroller, walk through the neighborhood, drive to a park, walk through the park. The park is really great if your kids are a little bit older, they're on the play set playing, you're on the bench connecting. Go to the mall, same type of concept. We used to go to Ikea because there was like a, um, a daycare type situation in Ikea where you could drop off your kids and we would wander through the store and that was a season where we were building our apartment, buying furniture, doing things like that. So our Ikea days were nice because then we would kind of get into conversations about our home and where we want things to go and we figured out what each other's tastes were and it was fantastic. So this type of connection plus physical intimacy is a more complete type of intimacy to me. The second type of date we like to do are financial dates. Now, lately, we've, we've started doing this once a week just to sit down with my husband and talk about where we, we want to go financially, what our goals are, set minor goals. If we have debts, set up a strategy to get rid of those debts. If I want to make a major purchase, get his thoughts on that. If he wants to make a major purchase, if a kid has come and asked for something, just get on the same page. This has been so important because it has killed a lot of the bickering that happens. I saw this purchase on the credit card. Where did that come from? You bought another pair of boots. How many boots do you need? Some rules that we have when we're dating is um, like for the romantic dates, we, we say that we give ourselves five minutes to say everything we want to say about the kids. And then after that, we don't talk about the kids. We also make it not our opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one fight that we couldn't have that we've been holding on to. We take care of that stuff before we go on our dates. But Marriage is work, but to me, this is the good side of the work. It's also the side of the work that is very easy for us to become lazy about. It's easy for us to take each other for granted. But when you take the time to do these things, you will remember what it was that drew you to that person and why you chose to get married in the first place. And if you're in a type of situation where, you know, it wasn't all that hot for you, the connection that drew you together, you can build that. You can grow to be closer, even closer than you were when you first started. So let me know what your thoughts are down below. And please don't forget to like the video. I know I hate having a sign in to like the video, but it would really help me if you let YouTube know how much you're enjoying these videos. Be blessed.